Hey everyone. Oh wow, that's loud. <laughs> hey everybody. Wow. Um, his presence hasn't left since last Sunday. I don't know if you can feel it when you walk through these doors, but he's so near. So just give him your attention. I'm going to read a verse from Songs of Solomon. It says, I sleep, but my heart is awake. It is the voice of my beloved. He knocks, saying, open for me. My sister, my love, my dove, my perfect one. For my head is covered with the dew, my locks with the drops of the night. Lord, thank you for meeting us here. Thank you for your spirit, Father. Thank you that as you exhale, Father God, we inhale, Father God, your spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for inhabiting in this place, Father. We pray right now, Father God, that you would just have your way tonight, Jesus. You're so near. You're so near. So I just ask that you would just continue to knock on the doors of our hearts, Jesus. We just give you our yes, Father God. We continually give our yes, an endless yes, Father God. We say yes to you, Father. We say yes to everything that comes with it. We sign a blank contract, Jesus, and we just give everything to you. We just lay it at your feet, Jesus, because you're so worthy. We look to you, Jesus. We love you, Father. We will follow the lamb wherever he goes. We will follow the lamb wherever he goes. We will be the ones that will follow the lamb wherever he goes. This is a true Jesus people who follow the lamb wherever he goes. So thank you, Jesus, for coming tonight, Father, for meeting us tonight in this place, Father God. We have one agenda, and that's to go after you, to seek your face, Father God. We don't come for healings, we don't come for anything, but to worship and to love on you, Jesus. We come, Father God, and we say thank you. We come with gratitude, Jesus. We thank you, we remember what you've brought us from, Father. We remember where you brought us from, Father. We say thank you. Thank him, church. You have something to be thankful for. You have breath in your, in your lungs. You're here tonight, not by just some random chance, but he chose you to be in the room tonight. So thank you, Jesus. Thank him, church. Thank him, church. You have so much to be thankful for. Thank you for your presence, Jesus. Thank you for your blood, Jesus. Your blood that was shed on the cross, Father. We thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Father. Thank him. Thank you, church. Thank him, church. We bless you, Jesus.
all stand and honor the Lord. Lifted up. Sing it, church. Sing it, sing it, sing it. Worthy is the Lamb.
on church sing 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 see it on the throne we crown you Lord we crown you now with many crowns you reign victorious high and lift Sing the song. This is heaven's song. It's one worship service. It's just one worship service. On heaven and earth, we gather around the same throne. It's the same worship service. sing in the spirit. Come on. Come on, fill the room. Fill the room. Fill the room.
so close now. Sing. Your grace has found me just as I am. Empty handed. Empty handed. But alive in your hand. Lifted church. Majesty. Majesty. This is your house, Lord. This is your house. Your grace has found me just as I am. Empty handed, but alive in your hand. Sing that again. Sing that again. Majesty. Lift it.
voice, every voice with everything in us, majesty. Just lift your hands and begin to love the Lord. Come on. Come on, just begin to love Him. Refuse distraction right now and look at Jesus. This is how you go deeper. I, I will give.
fixed on Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the precious blood of Jesus. We thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for your word that you honor above your own name. We thank you for the power in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for this gathering tonight, for this precious church you have birthed and blessed. I pray your presence here tonight would intensify. Come on, agree with me. That your presence here would intensify. That everyone under the sound of my voice would be saved tonight who needs to be saved. That every sickness would melt away tonight in the fire of the Holy Spirit. I pray, Jesus, we'd be so sensitive to the movement of the Holy Spirit, that Holy Spirit, you would have this meeting completely, that it would truly be led of this Spirit. Now, Lord, we ask, come on, we ask that you would help us yield tonight the best we can and move like a mighty river through this room. I pray for every person who's come in from out of town, every pastor, every missionary who paid a price to get here tonight, that they would leave with more than they paid for. You touch them tonight. Bring great glory to the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, I plead the precious blood of the Lamb of God over this night, over us as a people, over this building in Jesus' name. Wow. I just want you in thanksgiving with hearts, listen, with hearts fixed on the Lord, with the eyes of your hearts staring at the exalted Christ, I want you to give him an offering right now of praise. Can you do that? do that again. Come on. Uh, 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, look at someone, say, tonight you're going to meet Jesus all over again. Say it to about five people. I love you. Love you. Love you guys. Love you. Wow. Love you, Donna. Thank you. Oh, Jesus. There's no way you said it to five, but that's okay. Let's quickly grab a seat. Just pay attention here for the next 10 to 15 minutes. Quickly, quickly grab a seat. I'm going to ask that nobody moves over those next 10 to 15 minutes. Aren't you happy to be here tonight? How many of you feel the Lord in the house? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. How many of you feel the Lord in His house? In His house. I'm just going to wait till everybody gets seated, please. Thank you, worship team. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hmm. Close your eyes just for a moment. I want you to say this out loud. Say, Jesus, you brought me here tonight by your Spirit. You knew I'd be here tonight before I was ever born. It was your plan that I be sitting in this room, in this very seat. I see your guidance and I recognize your guidance. So I yield tonight to your loving hand. Do in me whatever you want to do. I am yours. My heart is open. My will has bowed down. Have me tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to turn to Genesis chapter 3. And the reason I ask that nobody moves is because I'm about to preach the gospel. And the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. That's what Paul said. I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. In other words, the gospel carries salvation power. The gospel is heaven's song. The gospel is not so much a message as it is a person. Jesus himself is the gospel. The word gospel means good news. Good is an understatement. It is great news. It is unimaginable news. It is gracious news, and that in and of itself is an understatement. It is news that is full of mercy. Yes, it's good, but it's so good it wounds the heart. It runs us through with the arrow of God's love. The gospel has nothing to do with your ability tonight. The gospel has everything to do with God's ability. Aren't you glad this evening that you did not have to get to heaven on your own and wash your own sin away? Are you grateful tonight that Jesus came down to you? You did not go to him. In fact, Jesus said that we did not choose him, but he chose us. John the Beloved writes in his, apostle, in his epistle that we, we love him because he first loved us. 
The love of Jesus, unlike human love, is so thoroughly proven. It is tangible, touchable. It is real. It is authentic. It has been proven in blood, not mere wording. There's no love like the love of Jesus. In Genesis chapter 3, Adam and Eve fell. The word Genesis means beginnings. When they fell, they began to hide from God. We see in Genesis 3, 8, and they heard the sound of the Lord God walking. I'm going to read, I'm going to read that again to you. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking. I didn't know sounds could walk. Unless your name is the Word. You missed that? That's okay. You don't think when Jesus was raised from the dead and they mistook him as a gardener that that was his first trip to a garden, do you? They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden and in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. If you're going to hide, find the right tree. There's only one tree that you can hide under. There's only one tree whose shadow hides you from the devil and his horrible affliction that hides you from the judgment of the Lord. There's only one tree worth hiding under. Reinhard Bunke said regarding this passage that after Adam and Eve sinned, they decided to live without God, but God decided he would not live without Adam and Eve. And so he came looking for Adam and Eve. It is natural to hide yourself if you're in shame. Hmm. They realize their nakedness. You know, when you come into the presence of the Lord in a meeting like this tonight, where it's like he's in the air because he is in the air. I said because he is in the air. In him we live, move, and have our being. This is the very house of the Holy Spirit, and even the air bows its knee to the King. If you didn't cry out, the carpet would. If you didn't cry out, your chairs would. The columns would. If your hearts didn't shake, God would shake this house. He is the king, and he changes everything. Everything. So it's not sometimes, I should say, if you don't know the Lord, and you walk into a meeting like this, and you're living in sin, You're bound in sin. Sin has control over your body, your members, your thoughts. Your tongue, the Bible says, if a tongue is harder to tame than it is to conquer a whole city. You come into a meeting like this and your first reaction is to hide. It is to hide from God I've seen so many people when the worship reaches a certain place, it's time for them to go. It's sad because they don't need to hide. They need to run to Jesus. And so the Lord came walking and he asked a question in verse 9. Where are you? God was not confused. Neither was he blind. God was not lost. He knew where they were. But he was asking a question that would pierce Adam's heart and Eve's heart in two ways. 
one. But they would ask themselves this question. Where have you fallen to? Don't you miss the glory? Don't you miss the presence? The Bible says that Adam was clothed in light. He was clothed in the glory of God. He traded that for leaves. Leaves to hide his sin. What are leaves going to do? But don't we do the same thing? Don't we hide our sin with different things? The acceptance. By attending Jesus' image and never really meeting Jesus, you can hide that way too. Especially in a room this size, you can get away and hide. And so the Lord asked the question, where are you? The second reason he asked that question is because Adam missed his appointment. They had met together for only the Lord knows how many decades. And this was the first morning that Adam missed his appointment with God to walk with him through the garden. And here you hear, right here in this passage, you hear the loving, longing heart of our Heavenly Father. Where are you, Adam? I miss you. You need to thank him. You need to thank him that he is like that. And so Adam said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. And so I hid myself. Verse 11, he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded that you should not eat? And then the man said, The woman, <laughs> a typical man, she made me do it. She gave it to me. Uh huh, uh huh, sure, yeah. The woman whom you gave to be with me. So, number one, it's her fault, Lord, and it's your fault for giving her to me. This whole thing was your idea. The woman whom you gave to me. I wonder if there's anyone in here who blames God for what's happened in their life. Do you know it's a holy thing to get real and take ownership? You'll never get free as long as you deflect and blame someone else for your own sin. How can someone else cause you to sin? And the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you've done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. You see, she didn't start by eating. This whole thing started when she turned her attention away from the Lord's presence and started talking to a snake. It didn't start with consuming. It didn't start with taking on the nature of the temptation through consumption. No, it just started by turning her eyes away. I wonder if there's anyone in the room tonight who has turned their eyes away from Jesus. And as a result, you bit off more than you could chew. The Lord said, because you've done this to the serpent, you are cursed more than all cattle, more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed, with a capital S, that is Jesus, and he shall bruise your head, and you will bruise his heel. Or he shall crush your head, and you will bruise his heel. Only Jesus wins by being bruised. It's easy to win by doing all the bruising. But it takes humble, majestic wisdom to win by dying. Amen. 
I want you to look up at verse 21. We're going to skip through a few verses there. Also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. When the Lord saw their sin, God decided to not leave them naked. And He certainly decided to, decided to not leave them in the clothing they had constructed to cover their own nakedness. That's the mercy of the Lord. We all come up with our own clothing, our own strategies on covering our sin, coping with it. Might be drugs, alcohol, porn, lust, self promotion, self promotion, self promotion, self promotion. The lifting of self. These are all coping mechanisms. This is all a fig leaf that we construct. But God doesn't leave us there. Here we see that God Himself kills an animal. Listen to me. God Himself kills an animal. I've heard some people say that this could be a lamb. We don't know. We don't know. The Scripture doesn't say that specifically. Nonetheless, the Lord instituted this. You need blood to cover your sin, not your own clothing. You need my way, not your way. And so here we see God Himself slay an animal and cover His children in the animal skin, which would have been wet with blood on the inside. In Exodus chapter 12, you don't have to turn there. Let me just read it to you. In Exodus chapter 12, the Bible teaches that God commanded all of Israel, listen carefully, on the night of Passover, the night of their deliverance, and I'm here to tell you in Jesus' name tonight that tonight is the night of your deliverance. You will walk out of the Egypt of sin, of death, of serving these demonic gods, ten major gods for Egypt, and so God sent ten plagues to embarrass and destroy them. By the time God was done with Egypt, it was a nuclear waste zone. He plundered it of its crops. He plundered it of its livestock. He destroyed its water source. There were boils on the people from Pharaoh on down to the beggar. If you were not in the covenant, you were suffering in Egypt. He, and by the end of it all, he took their wealth as well. And, and the children of Israel left with every dime, all the silver and gold that Egypt had. God completely plundered them. And I'm here to tell you tonight that God has completely destroyed the power of sin in a more powerful way. He's destroyed the strength of it through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And he told the Israelites, tonight, listen carefully, you will leave Egypt. And tonight, church, you who are sitting there tonight, you who were brought here by friends, you who've been testing out God by coming, you who've seen us online and came into the room, or those of you who are watching tonight online, I'm here to tell you, you're leaving Egypt tonight. You're leaving Egypt. The Lord, the Lord told the Israelites, put your belts on, tie your sandals, for tonight you are leaving with haste. He said, come to the meal, which, by the way, was a lamb. And he said, I want you to get a lamb for every house. For those of you who are praying for household salvation, don't you dare give up. It is a promise from God. Those of you praying for your children, don't you dare give up. There is a lamb for every house. I feel the Lord on that. For those of you who are praying for your spouse, stop debating them and serve them in humility. There's a lamb for every house. 
Jesus is enough for every house. Tonight we saw, you'll see it in a little while, the children this Sunday morning, this, this morning, at, at, at Sunday morning church, singing to Jesus, caught up in spontaneous worship there in the children's room. God moving, there's a lamb for every house. I'm telling you right now, under the unction of the Holy Spirit, that the day will come here at Jesus' image where the children show us the way. And so he told all of Israel, get a lamb and kill it at twilight. Jesus' friends died at twilight. And he said, take that lamb and roast it over an open fire and rub it with bitter herbs, speaking of the suffering of Jesus. And as the Israelites consumed the lamb and marked, listen carefully, marked their houses with the blood of the lamb, the death angel came through and took the firstborn of Egypt, but did not touch the children of Israel. Oh, gosh. God didn't come to massage the devil when he manifested in the flesh. He came to destroy the devil, to completely to completely disarm him and dismantle him and embarrass him. And so those Israelites took blood, listen carefully, and God said, take, take the blood of that lamb that has been slain and dip hyssop into that blood. Hyssop speaks of faith. It speaks of the confession of faith. That's why it says in the book of Revelation chapter 12, we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. That doesn't mean you just share all the testimonies. The testimony is about the blood. And so Moses instructed Israel, take his up. Take the confession of faith. Take your faith and plunge it into the depths of the blood. Don't put your faith in Pharaoh's chariots. Don't put your faith in your own strategy and wisdom. Take the hiss up and plunge it into the blood. See, many of you have been trying to clean yourselves tonight. It doesn't work. Put your faith in the blood of Jesus. And so the children of Israel took the blood and they marked the two doorposts and the lintel of every house. In the form of a cross, the two doorposts and the lintel, and they smeared crosses on the front doors of their dwelling places. And then they began to eat the Lamb of God. You see, Jesus doesn't want to be admired from a distance. He wants you to consume him. Salvation is so much more than just getting to heaven. At the core, salvation is becoming like Jesus. You have to consume Jesus to be like Jesus. You see, it's life for life until he enters, man, the marrow of your bones, the depths of your heart. Jesus has given us his very own spirit. So that death angel came through. Do you know why that death angel came through? Because God called Israel his firstborn. And he said, let my people go. Again, he said, let my people go. Again, he said, let my people go that they might worship me. And Pharaoh held on. And God came to the place where he said, fine, if you keep my firstborn, I will take yours. That night, as the children of Israel were receiving the life-giving power of the Lamb, the firstborn of Egypt were dying throughout the land. And such fear came on Egypt as a nation that they begged Israel to leave. Tonight, I want to ask you this question. Where is your hyssop? Where is your faith? Where have you placed it? In this world system, in the Egypt of this age? In strategy? In religion? In memorizing doctrine, as important as that is, it's meant to lead you to the person of Jesus. 
There are many who confess the right doctrine but live like Satan. Because as Jesus said to the Jewish leaders, your father is the devil. If God were your father, you know who I am. No, oh, that's my question to you tonight. Have you been smeared in the blood? Have you been marked by the blood? On that great day when Jesus returns or when you stand before the throne, will the judgment of God pass over you because your soul is marked in the blood? Will God see you through a red lens, the blood of his son that speaks a better word, that doesn't speak you deserve death, it speaks welcome to righteousness and newness of life? And the blood of Jesus that is the Father's idea Genesis, the Bible says that God gave Abraham his miracle child named Isaac. And one day the father refused to share Abraham's heart with Isaac. And so he said, give me your son. Take him up that mountain, Mount Moriah, and slay him on that mountain. And so Isaac was given wood, and he carried that wood up the mountain. And Abraham looked at his servants and said, myself and the lad, we will return. You see, Abraham knew he's the God of resurrection. He knew. He knew he's the God who gives life to that which dies, to that which is surrendered. And when Isaac went up that mountain, he said, we have everything we need except the sacrifice. Where is the lamb? And then, the fa and then Abraham said to Isaac, the Lord will provide the lamb. I'm here to tell you tonight, with every head bowed and eye closed, every head bowed and eye closed, the Lord has provided the lamb. His name is Jesus Christ. Jesus of Nazareth, the gentle shepherd, the bleeding lamb, the one who's raised, the great I am, the ancient of days, the bright and morning star, the lover of your soul. God has provided the gentle, bleeding, wounded lamb. Friend, listen carefully. Proof of your salvation is your freedom from sin and his life being lived through you. That's the Bible. there's one thing you do not want to risk, if there's one thing you don't want to play with, it is your salvation. Everyone here who is doubting, who doesn't know if they're saved, who doesn't know Jesus at all, who once walked with Jesus and turned their back on him, you know who you are. You can leave tonight covered in the blood of Jesus. And when the Father looks at you, He won't look for your own righteousness. He'll see the righteousness of His very own Son on you. This is the greatest news. This is the gospel. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. With every head bowed and eye closed, you say, Michael, I need my sin to be dealt with. I want to be made clean. I want to be washed whiter than snow. 
I want to be brand new. I want to be redeemed. I want the righteousness of God. I don't want this world anymore. I don't want my habits. I don't want my sin. I'm turning. I'm repenting tonight. And I'm giving all to Jesus. All to Jesus. All to Jesus. With every head bowed and eye closed, if that's you tonight, I want you to lift your hand all over the room. You say, I want to give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Many of you have walked away. Thank you, Lord. If you've walked away from Jesus and you want to come home tonight, I want you to lift your hand. Keep it up. I want you to keep them up. Nobody's looking at you. Don't worry. This is wonderful. I want everyone to stand, please. Oh, thank you, Father. There are many children in the room tonight. Listen carefully. Children, the greatest thing you can do is give your heart to Jesus. Life is so short and there's nothing more beautiful and I believe the Lord Jesus is pulling on many of your hearts, children. Listen to me. If, if you want to give your life to Jesus tonight, I want you to look at your parents right now and say, Mom and Dad, I want to go down. I want to give my life to Jesus. If you brought, I want the front row praying in the Spirit. If you, if you brought someone tonight, and you know, or you came with someone, or you're sitting next to someone, and you know in your heart, that they're not living for the Lord. Maybe they're Christian by name only. Maybe they don't know the Lord at all. Maybe they're just resisting tonight. I want you to look them in the eye and say, come on, give your life to Jesus tonight. And in just a moment, I'm going to give you the opportunity to walk down here with them. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. If you raised your hand, listen carefully, or you wish you did, if you're one of those children or somebody that your friend is talking to right now, I want you to come forward right now and give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, get down here now. Get down here and give your life to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Come on, give the Lord praise. This is wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come forward. Come forward to, the, come to Jesus. Come, look, look, they're coming. Come on, come on, come on. Give your life to the Lord. Give your life to the Lord. Give your life to the Lord. If you're in this crowd tonight, don't resist. Don't hold back. Come, come to Jesus, who is full of mercy, who loves you, who loves you so much. Come on, come on, give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise, give the Lord praise. Thank you, Lord. They're still coming. Come to Jesus tonight. Thank you, Lord. Come to Jesus. Oh, don't resist tonight. Come to Jesus who died for you, who shed his blood for you. There is no one like him. There is no one like him. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come forward. Come close. Yeah, come. Come, come. You can come. Come. Thank you, Father. Isn't this wonderful? I said, isn't this wonderful? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus is right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. For those of you who come forward tonight, we're going to hand our lives over to the Lord Himself. You're going to give Him everything about you, the good and the bad and the ugly, your deepest, darkest sin. You're going to hand it to Him, and He will wash you white as snow and never remind you of it again. He will destroy your sin tonight. The Bible says that old things have passed away and all things have become new. Church, I want you to give the Lord praise for this. This is awesome. Thank you, Father. Thank you. What an honor. What an honor. As I begin, as I begin praying, look, 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 as I begin praying for these people, as they hand their lives over to the Lord, and the Lord starts drawing you, you get down here, you break this thing up, come on down. The Lord loves that. For all of you who've come forward, you look me in the eye. Tonight we're going to pray as authentically as we know how, and hand our hearts over to the Lord Jesus. God bless you. It's awesome. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. That's real boldness. 
Young man, that's real boldness. Do you, do you realize how tightly the devil holds souls? I will never forget an experience I had last year where the Lord began to show me how God was sending people in the room here to get saved. And the devil would lie to them and fight tooth and nail. And many people would leave the room. This was a dream I had. And many people would leave the room just before they heard the gospel. You see, this is a moment of decision. These are moments that have eternal ramifications. And the only thing between you and eternal life is the stubborn will. You see, the gateway into eternity is humility, lowliness, coming to this Jesus who is humble, who is humility himself. Don't resist, friend. As I begin praying for them, as this young man did, as I begin praying for them, if you feel that convicting power of the Spirit, you come to Jesus tonight. For all of you who've come forward, let's pray. I want everyone in their seats to stretch their hands. I want everyone who's come forward to lift their hands. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Everybody who's come forward, lift your hands. Everyone else, just stretch them as, a, as, a, as support. We're praying for them now. If you've come forward, let's pray this out loud and mean it from the depths of your soul. Heavenly Father. Out loud. Come on. Heavenly Father. I have sinned against you. And I am sorry. Forgive my sin. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. Cleanse my soul. Make me white as snow. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of the living God. That you came to the earth and lived a perfect life. That you suffered and died to pay the penalty of my sin and death. And I believe that you were buried and raised from the dead because you are God Almighty. I believe that you've ascended to the right hand of the Father and that you are coming back again to rule and reign as King of kings and Lord of lords. I repent of my sin. I turn from it. I turn from the ways of the world. I turn from the devil himself. And I give the fullness of my heart to Jesus. Jesus, come live in my heart. Save my soul. Receive my life as I receive yours. In Jesus' name, I am yours forever. I am born again. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Tears are flowing as these precious people are discovering the beauty of garments of righteousness. Some are just weeping here. Dion, would you come, please? This is Dion, for those of you who came forward. Would you all look at him? You need to read your Bible every day. This is true life and true strength, the bread of life. If you don't have a Bible, we'll help you get one. This is what Dion does. It would be our joy to do that. Number two, you need to pray every day. Just spend time with the Lord. Talk to Him. As real as you know how. He will teach you how to pray. Number three, you need to be baptized in water. We'll do that here very soon. We'll baptize you in water. Number four, you need to give your heart to a people. It's called church, in his presence. 
That is church. You need to find a church. If it's not this one, find the one that loves Jesus and loves his word. Amen. Last but not least, the Lord has promised to empower you with the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit, listen carefully, who will empower your life. I don't care what you think of you. God thinks good things about you. And the Lord can take, if you're a nobody, that's perfect. A woman named Catherine Kuhlman said, if you can use a nobody, here she is. And God used her to change the world. It's not about us, but if the Holy Spirit comes upon you in power, which is a promise, he will use you to bring others to the saving knowledge of Jesus and to a life in Jesus. So that's why Dion's here. Dion wants you. He wants to serve you and wants you to step into this beautiful life in the Lord. And there's a new believer's table outside, right outside that door. And you need to find Dion after this service. It's not, as I say, every week we are not here to bother you or to market to you. We are here to serve you and make sure that you're equipped to live a strong, victorious Christian life. Please, I'm asking you to meet Dion after service. It won't take long. Okay? Can you do that for me? Yep, guys, can we give the Lord praise? You, you can stand up. You can all stand up. And ushers, if you would, help them back to their seats. Let's welcome them home. Come on, welcome them home. Thank you, Father. So beautiful. Come on, give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give the Lord praise. Thank you, Jesus. You know, last week, last week I lost my voice preaching, and Jesse, you, you can be seated. Jesse pulled me to the side. Isn't the Lord wonderful? Jesse pulled me to the side and said, maybe you'd keep your voice if you didn't sing in worship. I go, there's no chance of that happening. There's no way I could sit through a service like a stiff. I could not do it. We've got to figure out another way. He's worth singing to, isn't he? He's mighty, and the arm of the Lord is not too short. He is mighty to save. This is a wonderful time for us to give to Jesus. Ryan, would you come? Welcome, Ryan, please. I love you. I love you. All right. You guys ready to worship Jesus with our tithes and our offerings tonight? Come on. How many of you guys know this is a, a beautiful, as a, as a house, as worshipers, as Levites unto the Lord, this is part of our priestly ministry is worshiping him with our tithes and with our offerings. Um, you know, Malachi chapter 3, it's a, it's a famous chapter in regarding giving unto the Lord. We know where it talks about the windows of heaven being opened up, and there's such a blessing that's poured out that there's not room enough to contain it. But if you go up a little bit in chapter 3, verse 3, it's amazing. He is specifically talking to the sons of Levi, worshipers, Levites, priests, you know, Michael said it a few, a few weeks ago, as men of the home, we owe it to our families to give, to tithe, gives our tithes and our offerings unto Jesus. That there is a window of heaven opened up our household, but it starts with us worshiping the Lord with our tithes and with our offerings. If you guys want to go to verse 3, it says, 3 verse 3, it says, he will sit like a refiner of silver. Malachi chapter 3 verse 3, he will sit like a refiner of silver burning away the dross. He will purify the Levites, refining them like gold and silver so that they may once again offer an acceptable sacrifices to the Lord. Then once more, the Lord will accept the offerings brought to him by the people of Judah and Jerusalem as he did in the past. And if you go down a little bit to verse seven, he, they ask, but how can, how, can you, how can we return? And then Jesus answers a question for them. He says, they say, when have you, we've gone away? He said, should people cheat God? Yet you have cheated me. But you ask how? He says, what do you mean? He says, when did we ever cheat you? You have cheated me with the tithes and with the offerings due to me. 
you know, as, as a house of Levites and as worshipers, that we, let's not carry on like the priests in this chapter with everything else but forgetting this part of worship with our finances, with our resources. You know, on one side of, of, of the offering, it's for the advancement of the kingdom. You know, it's, it's this beautiful thing that we get to do to see the advancement of the kingdom with our resources, as well as represent Jesus and be a beautiful representation of him. But on the other hand as well, that this is a sweet smelling aroma unto Jesus as priests and as Levites. You know, it's amazing that the Lord would give us the means in which to love him with. I was thinking about that the other day. I'm like, you give us the means in which to love you with. Like, what a beautiful father that you are. You know, our daughter for Christmas had this little thing where she got to take money that we gave her to buy us a gift at school and then give it to us. And it so moved our hearts, Carla and I. It was like very specific to us. And I was thinking like, this is the money that I gave her, but she gave it back and it so moved my heart. And the Lord loves that as priests and as Levites, he has given us the means in which to love him with. And it's beautiful. In fact, in, and I believe it's in Luke chapter 15, Jesus tells us parable of a story that we all know as the prodigal son. But what's wild about that, about that story, it started with an improper stewardship of finances a son asking his father for an inheritance and then once getting the inheritance kept it for himself. The Bible says he went out and had wild parties and ended up eating with the pigs. But it started with an improper stewardship of finances. And so what we've asked the Lord for, what we've prayed for, believed for as a house and for our families, for finances, for blessing, let's not withhold. But as priests and as Levites of worshipers, let's give to the Lord tonight. Let's worship him with our tithes and with our offerings tonight as sons and daughters of the Most High. So let me pray over this offering before we give. Father, we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. As priests, as Levites, we can worship you with our tithes and with our offerings. And because you're such a good father, you bless your children. God, I thank you that you bless every giver in this house that you bless everybody watching online. Lord, I thank you, Heavenly Father, that you bless households and families and generations because of us, their giving, Jesus, because of the seed sown tonight into your hand. We love you and we thank you. In your precious name we pray, amen. We are gonna bring the buckets up. If you guys need envelopes, our ushers are gonna be walking around. They will give you an envelope. You are watching, you can text the number on your screen. There's a number here in the house. There's an, an, also another one online watching. So, love you guys. Thank you. Wow. Come on, love Ryan. privilege. We'll be right back. God bless you guys. May the Lord bless you.
Franco would say. Calm down. All right. Oh, babe, come on up, would you? All right. Um. All right. Um. This Tuesday night, you want to talk about this Tuesday? Yes, okay. Tuesday night, can we put the graphic up? There it is. Okay, so this Tuesday night, this is for our members. So if you feel like you found your people and this is your church or you're thinking about making this your church, we would love to meet you. Michael and I will be there. Our whole team will be there. It's going to be this Tuesday night at Harvest Time International. This is where we have partnered with them. We feed the poor every week when we have the school going on. This is the place where we do that. Amazing place, amazing people. So we're going to be there. It's 225 Harvest Time Drive. See how easy that is to remember? <laughs> yes, this Tuesday night, 7 o'clock. It would be awesome if you guys are coming. If you could text that number on your screen, this will help us know how many people to um, get food for and stuff. We're going to okay, have light let me, refreshments. Let me just, hold on, hold on. The food thing. Yeah. Let me help there. Okay. This is not a feeding. It's not a feeding, no. For you. Okay. We're being <laughs> this nice. This is not We're a mass buffet for you to come get a free meal. That's true. All right. Yeah. This is if you feel, and may the angels of heaven chase you down <laughs> if you lie to get some free grub. All right, listen. If you feel that God has called you to covenant here at Jesus Image and make this your church, if you feel like God has called you here, this is going to be an amazing night. Jesse and I, as Jesse said, will be there. Our team will be there. We'll get a lot of face, face time with you, not, not that face time, uh, actual face time. <laughs> um, and a chance for you to hear the heart and the vision of, of, of the church. Yeah. And what kind of, we're, we're doing food? Okay, keep Light it going. Light refreshments. Yeah, there we go. Little go. food. All right. Snacks. So it'll be a great night. You need to text that number so that we have an idea as to how many are coming. There is a capacity uh, to the room, so be sure to text that number. Okay, what, what oh, Jesus 21, oh, yeah. Um, December 17 through 18, come Lord Jesus is the theme. We are going to be crying out to the Lord and believing him for a mass outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I don't even know Jesus is returning for a bride without spot and wrinkle and he is making her ready by his spirit. Amen? Amen? Amen. So that's December 17, 18. We've added a new day, yeah. which is or, or, uh, an extra day, I should say, which is awesome, and we're going back to the fairgrounds, and we've rented the bigger field, dead smack in the middle of the fairgrounds. And in Jesus' name, hopefully the borders are wide open at that point, and people will be coming in from around the world. At Jesus 19, we had 82 nations represented. I'm believing God for over a hundred nations should those borders open. And if not, then he'll just fall on a bunch of people living in America and we're going to see revival. Amen? Yes. Amen. Okay. That's Jesus 21. All right. Babe, where are the, the children's workers? Carla is giving them, I think. Leaders. So today, just the Holy Spirit fell at Children's Church. It was quite amazing. The crew sent me videos. The team was all crying. They just started to worship the Lord today, and they were just singing out just unto the Lord, and we wanted to share a little bit about that. I think Carla is grabbing. Do we have a video? Yeah. You know what? Can we show the video? Do you guys have the video? Is that a yes? Yeah. Oh, 
They've been seeing, uh, the kids have been praying for the sick, I guess. Kids are getting healed kids in, are getting in healed. kids' church. It's just, and this is what we prayed for. We want God to yeah. touch our children even deeper than he touches us, right? Mm. All the moms and dads say amen, right? Amen. Uh, we got the girls behind you. Oh, wow. Yeah. We just wanted That's to hear. That's so freaky. All right. <laughs> Grab a mic there, Esther. Grab that microphone. Yeah, you take that one, Mackenzie. All right. For those of you who don't know, this is Esther and Mackenzie. Um, and uh, they, they so selflessly, so selflessly serve your children. And uh, we believe, the whole, my mom used to say, and I've heard many people say this, there's no junior Holy Spirit. And when the Lord begins to touch kids, he begins to change the world. And that's a very dangerous deal for the enemy and a beautiful thing in the eyes of the Lord. So what's been going on back there? Yeah, so obviously it's so beautiful. Every Sunday I feel like we get to see the kids step in deeper. And this morning we were so stirred just with faith and expectancy. We opened up in our team. We opened in prayer, but I wasn't sure what was going to happen. And we usually do our worship. So we have a TV and it plays like Jesus image worship. Um, and we just engage, we have like flags and stuff. And while we were worshiping, the TV just cut off. And so, um, as I was standing there, I just felt the Holy Spirit, like, no, they need to just sing. So we got one of our little girls, she came up there and I was like, okay, we're just gonna sing holy. So we just started singing holy and immediately just like this sweet presence came into the room. And I just got so overwhelmed, I just started crying and the kids just took it over. They just started singing yes. it and singing it to the point I was like, oh my gosh, I went into the back and just sat on my knees and cried. And it went on for 20 minutes and yes. we started getting yes. uncomfortable. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I was like getting to the point where I was like, we're running out of time. We didn't do our lesson. We didn't do our crafts. And I'm like, oh my goodness. And me and Mackenzie were like, oh my goodness. I, I started to pray and like, and, and then I felt the kids started singing louder. And I was like, oh, this is so. When you started praying? Yeah. Cause I was like, okay, we're gonna just transition. And the Lord just so gently was just like, Esther, didn't you ask me to come into the room? Wow. Didn't you ask me for this? And I just felt like this like gentle rebuke of like, this is what we've been longing for, for the kids to catch this. And they just started singing for almost 30 minutes. And we had five-year-olds sitting on the ground with their eyes closed, with their hands wow, open. We you. had kids laying on the ground all over, just singing. And yeah. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Thank him, guys. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, you say like about us serving in there. And it's like, mornings like this morning, it doesn't even feel like a sacrifice. Yeah. I'm like, that's exactly where I wanna be. Like to see those kids just repeating the same words and not getting tired of it. It's so touched our hearts and you could feel the delight of the Lord. Wow. Seeing them on their faces, just honoring his presence when he came, yes. was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. We think that we have to change things up and entertain them because they get bored, but when they feel the Lord, like, that's what they want, too. <laughs> wow. And last week, like, after you left, Jess, like... Jess taught Children's Church last Sunday morning. <laughs> they kept praying for each other. Like, one of the girls was like, oh, my foot hurts. And somebody in the back just like went and prayed for her foot and she just skipped off. <laughs> and it's like, 
Like, it, it all sticks. Like, what they hear, they just, it stays with them, and it, like, it goes down, and it, it's just so beautiful to see, like, how they encourage me, and, like, they encourage us, and, like, watching them worship so undignified is just so, like, we were praying for them to be encountered this morning, and I'm like, we were all encountered, we were all wrecked, we were all crying. <laughs> Like, I'm weeping, and one of the little boys is like, she's crying. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like, they're so hungry. Wow. And it's so beautiful. Like, it, it's such an honor to be a part of it and to see, like, what the Lord is doing in their lives. Wow. Aren't they ministering, like, to the sick and stuff? And oh, yeah. Praying for we each other? little girls that are going, going, going through their What's schools. What's going on back there? We just had a message from, I think she was, she's five or six years old, and um, one of our uh, volunteers were dropping her off at school, and the teacher came out, and she was like, are you the Sunday school teacher? And she's like, yes, and she was crying. She was like, thank you, because um, this little girl um, is strong. <laughs> She's a leader. So she was, she was like, like, you know, she's great. And, <laughs> well yeah, done, they're Esther. Good. They're well good. Done. All right. And um, she was like, one um, of the class days, this little girl was eating lunch with her friends. And she was like, okay, guys, listen to me. I'm going to start this conversation. She was like, Jesus came and he died on the cross. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Wow. Wow. I'm going to start this conversation. <laughs> wow. That was over lunch? Yeah, and she was like, she he took came, her authority and, and died on the ground. She was like, now you. And the kids were like, what to <laughs> say? The teacher started crying. She was like, what in the world? Like this. This kid was carrying such like a reverence of the Lord that she was like, it was like sparked a hunger in her to like doll. She's like, man, this little girl is like so bold about Christ. And it's like, we're seeing the kid's hunger is sparking a hunger in our generation and the older. And it's so beautiful. Wow. God, that's a dream come true. Guys, come on, we have to thank the Lord for that. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I love you guys. Love you. Love you. Love you, Esther. Go ahead. Wow. Babe, just stay up. Stay up. Wow. You, listen to me. That's how I'm going to start altar calls. It's incredible. Incredible. When I went in, I taught children's church, I don't know, four to six weeks ago. I don't remember. <laughs> I walked in. And one of the kids turned around and goes to the other kids, oh, it's the pastor. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it made me feel ancient, number one. Thing <laughs> two. Guys, it's the pastor. Oh, it's so funny. Isn't that beautiful? Jesus said that the kingdom of God is like little children. Heidi used to tell us, Heidi used to say, there is a side of Jesus you'll never know unless you're around children. And, and, and Bill used to tell us to pay attention to how we or others treat children. It tells us a lot about our spiritual walk. Because mature Christianity actually sees a measure of the presence of God in children, yeah. and the mature heart realizes that it needs that. Yes. You know, the, the, further you, the longer you walk with Jesus, the more childlike you want to become. Yeah. And so maturity is actually marked by simplicity and childlikeness. Yeah. And being around kids, especially kids who are in love with the Lord, help you. Being around kids who are not, challenges you. <laughs> if you want to see how spiritual you are, go on a fast and babysit. 
<laughs> I'm telling you. Take the kids or somebody else's, offer to babysit, do a one-day water fast, and you'll realize that sanctification is a current reality in a moment. <laughs> what um, people healed this morning in a beautiful way. What is uh? Yeah. So this morning, um, I got up to do announcements and. You know, you know, sometimes you're just hungry for more of Jesus and you just feel like you're not satisfied. And that's kind of been me this week. I just felt like I wasn't happy where I was a few weeks ago. You know what I mean? Like I just wasn't content. I needed more. And so I woke up this morning earlier than I'd like to. I'm not a morning person. All the students know this about me. Michael's saying amen. He's like Mr. Morning Bird. Like he's always up like... <laughs> before the sun comes up, and that's just not me. And so, but I just morning felt bird. morning, like a chirpy little happy bird that <laughs> wakes up in the morning and sings, and that's you. Um, that is not me. Oh my but God. I just felt this like <laughs> call. What does that have to do with I don't know. It's uh. just like those birds that wake you up in the morning. That's you. <laughs> <laughs> the morning bird. <laughs> Who got healed this morning? Okay. I want to get the testimony. Yes. So. Not a I, life morning Well, I story. just wanted to say how I felt. Who got healed? I, I got up this morning early and started feeling a call to pray for the sick. Not as early as me. Not as early as you, <laughs> morning bird. <laughs> and I was feeling the pull to really press in for people to get healed. And I believe God is going to heal people tonight as well. I believe that what he started this morning, he's going to do tonight. And so we got up to do the announcements, and Michael hates announcements, so I came and did the announcements. And when we were in worship, I heard fibromyalgia, which is crazy because I don't really even know what that means. I know that has something to do with pain, but I don't know. I just don't really know what it is. But I felt fibromyalgia and, I, and um, sleep apnea. And so before announcements, I just took a risk and released it. And God just started healing people in the room. And um, we've been getting testimonies even since like one of our students got healed of fibromyalgia. Her pain was gone. And then another one of our church members was in the restroom. Who's that? Britt Richards. I don't think she's here tonight. Yeah, though. she's there. No, that's here. not her. The hat. I thought the hat was Britt too. Oh, is that not Britt? I did the same thing. Oh. I saw the hat. What is I... your name? <laughs> same thing. Hi, no. Rebecca. <laughs> Might as well be tonight. Yes. Are you I, an early morning person? <laughs> you could be. <laughs> if, I laid, if I laid hands on you, you'd be a chirp, <laughs> chirpy morning bird. Oh, so Britt. So Britt Brit was in the restroom, and her husband, when I called out fibromyalgia, I, I guess she has that, and I didn't even know that. And so when she came back in the room, her husband said they called out fibromyalgia. And so after service, she went and got Amy, who works with us, and Ruth, who got healed that day. And Ruth and Amy prayed for her, and her sister-in-law's right there. She's, is she healed? Wow. No pain? Praise Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Who, who told you about the lady who came in from the pool? Uh, just the team. So there was a lady that heard the worship. She was staying at the hotel, going to the pool. and She, she had like her whole pool She gear had her gear swimsuit on with her pool gear. And she was walking, I guess, to the pool and heard the worship and said, I want to go in there. And she gave her life to Jesus that day. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, I... You know, when we, once we started the school, when we started the school, I noticed that, like, fashion moves, you know? It's, like, always moving. And you start a school, especially a school that worships, you have some pretty interesting, like, get-ups. I mean, we've had some gear for, like, graduation and stuff. I mean, we had one guy, remember the white shoes, the white suit, the gold, gold bow tie first year? And we've seen a lot of stuff. So you start hanging out with young people. So the lady came up, and I'm know like, who that is. <laughs> you know, the lady came up with her bait, like basically a bathing suit on with it. So I didn't want to judge. You know, she's getting saved, so I didn't care. I was like, I guess this is the deal. I don't know. Maybe it moved again. Fashion's gone another direction, but I didn't really care. She was getting born again, but she was going to the pool, and the worship drew her. 
I it's guess the worship. Guy was telling us when we were praying in the back that there were two little kids that were like Guy, Guy, come up, come up, come up, Guy. <laughs> Tell them what you told us. Oh, yeah. So after worship this morning, uh, me, Cam, and Joel headed out to go to the restroom. And I was waiting for them outside by the door. And as I was sitting down waiting for them, these two kids came out of, out of church. And their dad was outside. How, how like, old were they? They were like in between 10 and 13. Okay. And then they came out. And then their so dad Nico's was... Nico's age. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Got it. So then they came out. And then their dad was like... Uh, where where you guys been? He's like, oh, we've been in here. I was like, we've been looking for y'all for the last like 25 minutes. And they're like, oh, we just heard it from the room. We wanted to come down to see what it was and we decided to stay. And then, so the dad called the mom, I guess. And she was like, and he was like, well, the kids want to stay for service. So you better get down here and I'm staying. So we're going to be in the back. And then they went in. Guys, that's amazing. That's amazing. Wow. So, so the kids heard the worship, and the kids came in, but Dad couldn't find them. Yeah, Dad did. I, from what Sorry, I heard, Dad, that's not our fault, but <laughs> I, 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 that happened to me today. From what I heard, and Dad Jeff, was like, didn't go to church. They, like, took off yeah. in the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, we, different story. We had about 20 minutes where we couldn't find Benny today. Yeah. So sorry about that. But if you're going to lose your kids anywhere, let it be in the <laughs> presence of the Lord. But is, aren't kids just so beautiful, how they respond to the Lord himself? Wow. How many of you have children uh, and you're believing for their salvation or grandchildren? Okay, I want you to stand up. All right. I want, if you're near them, I just want you to come into agreement with them. And uh, Mackenzie and Esther, is Esther still in the room? Yeah. I want both of you to come up and I want each of you to pray a prayer for these children, that the Lord would grip them. Love you, Guy. Thank you. Come up. You guys take turns, and, and I want all of us, listen, stretch your hands towards one of them as an act of faith. Just find somebody in the room who's standing and stretch your hands. Come on. Let's believe God that the generations will be redeemed by Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for your blood. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your promises. Lord, I thank you that each one of these people standing abides in your presence, Lord. Lord, and that your word says that they and their household shall be saved. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Lord, so I thank you that their children are already yours. Yes, yes. That your blood is upon them, Jesus that not one of them shall be lost. Lord, bring them home to you. Lord, we plead your blood over them and we thank you. We thank you for their salvation, yeah, Jesus. Yeah, God, just begin praying in the spirit as Mackenzie's praying. We thank you, Lord, that they will oh, meet you, you Jesus. Lord, that even in dreams tonight that they will encounter you. Lord, that it will be so undeniably you, Jesus. That they will know your truth, that they will know your word, Jesus. That no weapon forged against them shall prosper because your blood is on them, Jesus. That everything that the enemy has meant for evil, you will turn and use for your good, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that they are yours, that they are your children, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We'll pray, Esther. Go. God, we just thank you, Jesus, that salvation isn't something you do, but it's who you are, God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus, that there's power and agreement, God. We thank you, Jesus, that we don't have to beg you, Jesus. On, church, pray in God, the that you are so near, God. We just come into agreement for every life, for every child, God. We thank you, Jesus, for how you're encountering them, Jesus, now. We thank you, and we come into agreement that they would have dreams, God, that they would have visions, Jesus. Lord, I thank you, God, that you're going to spark yes. a hunger 
hunger and deep desire in their hearts to know you, Jesus. I pray, God, that they wouldn't know about you, Jesus, but that they would have an encounter with you that would forever mark their lives, God. I thank you for every parent here, Jesus. I thank you, God, for their hunger and their tender hearts, Jesus. I pray that you would cover them, that you would give them wisdom, Jesus, that they would be ones that would set examples, God. I just thank you for their lives, Lord. And we just give these families to you, Jesus. Yeah, Lord, we thank you for a revival in the children. Yes, I pray that this house will be marked by a children's Revival, yes, a move yes, of the Holy yes, Spirit yes. in the children. Yes. So possess them that they even begin preaching the gospel as that little girl. Yes. I pray for signs and wonders yes, and miracles. Yes, May the fear of the Lord come upon people who hear these little children share Jesus. May parents come under conviction for compromise and mixture because of the holy light of the Spirit that is on the children. Come on, collectively now, come on, agree. Even if they don't need to get saved, if you have children, trust me, they all need more of the Spirit. If you have your children next to you in the room right now, put your hand on them. Put your hand on your kids. Father, in the name of Jesus, fall upon our children, Holy Spirit. Come upon our children. Visit our children. Touch our children. As Esther and Mackenzie prayed, visit them in the night. Give them dreams and visions. That's what the Scriptures teach that in the last days you would pour out your spirit upon all flesh. Do it. Let them prophesy. Let them preach the gospel. Make the word of God alive to them. Alive to them. Let the wisdom you give the children confound the wise. I speak to every, every family who has a wayward college age student, who's away at school. May the convicting power of the Holy Spirit come upon them. High school kids who have grown dull and numb and hard-hearted and, and, and disconnected. In Jesus' name, may the, may the power of the Spirit come upon them. May they count their days. May they number their days. May the saving power of the Holy Spirit arrest them. Let this be a children's move, a children's revival. Oh, Jesus, you love the children. Touch them. In Jesus' name. Touch them in Jesus' name. Hey, Ryan, come up here real quick. Dom, uh, Dom and Janae, get up here real quick. Come on. Quick, 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 quick. I just want you, baby, you too. Go put your, uh, Dion, come up here. Jones, come up. I want you guys to pray for Esther and Mackenzie. I want all of you to stretch your hands. Look, if they, if they, if they catch fire, your, these kids will catch fire. Oh God, come upon Esther and Mackenzie. Come on, I want all of you to pray in the Spirit. Come on. All of you in your homes, I'm asking you to do this too. This will affect you. May the Lord raise up anointed children, workers and leaders in Jesus' name. Father, let your glory come upon them. Let your power come upon them. Touch them. Touch Esther. Touch Mackenzie in Jesus' name with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Anoint them to teach your word, to minister the power of the Spirit among these children. In Jesus' name. 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 Jesus name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Come on, come on. Just, just say, Jesus, I worship you all over the room. You guys can be seated. Go, go ahead and be seated. We're all going to receive communion. Oh, isn't the Lord wonderful? Would you stay with me, baby? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Isn't the Lord good? Joel, thank you for playing so long. Thank you, Father.
Would you all just pray in the spirit for about 30 seconds? I want to see what the Lord wants to do. Come on, out loud, just begin to pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, Dom, would you come up? Would you just grab a mic? Keep praying, guys. Keep praying. Let's all stand and honor Jesus before we receive communion. to encourage some of you. I was waiting on the Lord and I was asking me, asking the Lord, remind me. I felt he had put something on my heart to, as a testimony to share with you and I forgot it. I forgot it while we were celebrating the other testimonies and so I waited. The Lord gave it back to me. I don't know why. I want to stay on this. I feel like this is what the Holy Spirit is speaking into. Moms and dads never stop declaring the greatness of God over your children. God's perfect will. When I was uh, in college, as you know, I got saved under Jesse's dad's ministry in 1989 as a 12-year-old kid. And by the time I went away to school in Gainesville to the University of Florida, I went from preaching the gospel at 16 in public meetings to not opening my Bible by the time I was 18 and 19 for two years. And when I'd come home on break, I'd go out 
to downtown Tampa or Ybor City and party all night. Literally five, six nights a week I was out. Let's just say Jesus saved me from a whole lot. I'd come in, and I'm sure my mom's watching right now, and I just want to thank God for my mom that she never stopped praying. Never stopped praying. I'd come in at 6, 7 in the morning, and my mom would be up still. I'd walk through the door, and I'll never forget one morning, This Is Your Day Was On, which was the name of my father-in-law's TV show that was on for, I don't know, still is, 30, 40 years now. And she was there watching one of the crusades. This was 1998. You and I didn't uh, start dating until 2003. And so my mom was watching the show. She'd been up all night praying. She wanted to kill me, rightfully so. But this is what she said to me. She said, you will serve the Lord. You're going to leave this life in the world, and you're going to give your heart to Jesus again, and you're going to serve him. Not only are you going to serve the Lord, listen to this now. She points to the TV screen and says, you're going to serve the Lord alongside Pastor Benny one day. I had been drinking all night. And when she said that, I thought to myself, hey, Ma, who's been drinking? Have you lost your mind? Because, you know, he's up there just like bouncing around the platform, white suit, and here I am, away from God. But my mom held on to the word that came into my heart, that came into my life here at Orlando Christian Center in 1989. Never shortchange the power as a parent of confessing God's promises over your children. I'll never forget in 2003 being on the platform Five years after my mom said something so wild, it was my first crusade with your dad. And there I am catching in Colorado Springs. And my mom's words came back to me as I was on the platform. Only God could do something like that. God can do it for you too. Amen? Let's come to the table of the Lord tonight in faith in our mighty God. I said in faith in our mighty God. He prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies. If you do not have communion elements, would you raise your hand, please, if you need them? There we go, guys. Thank you, ushers. You guys are the best in the world. So humble. We love you. Let's, Guy, you need elements? Here, come. I have, I have like four here. Does anyone up front here need any? We're good? Okay. I felt the Lord tell me. I know we did communion last week. But a, communion who a church that receives communion often and properly is a healthy church. How many of you know we believe in divine healing and divine health? Divine health is where we need to be. Communion is part of that. Yeah. Father, thank you for the body and blood of Jesus. Lord Jesus, you said, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body thou hast prepared for me. Holy Spirit, thank you for coming upon Mary. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jesus, for giving your body and blood. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the wounds on your head, the wounds on your face, the stripes on your back, the holes in your hands and feet, the wound on your side that is a door to your very heart. Thank you for the crown of thorns that gives us peace. Thank you again for the stripes that gives us healing. Thank you for the holes in your hands that redeems the work of our hands. Thank you for the holes in your feet that sanctifies and gives us a holy walk. 
Thank you, precious Lord, for your face that was beaten and marred beyond recognition so that we would carry the very image of Jesus. Thank you for your broken body, that our bodies would be made whole tonight. Thank you for your blood that washes our sin away. As your word says, it is shed for the remission of sin that is given to us. And so right now we lift the bread. We lift it high because you were lifted high on the cross. I pray, Father, that as we receive the body of the Lord Jesus, that every person who needs healing would be healed. In mind, in spirit, and in body, that this would be the healthiest, most healed church in the world. Not because of us, but because of you. We break the bread tonight together, and we receive your wholeness. In Jesus' name, receive the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Cleanse our souls, Lord. Now just give all of your attention to the Lord now. All of it. Oh, he's so near right now. Lift the cup. Lord Jesus, you called this the cup of the new covenant. It is a better covenant. You said, take and drink. This is my blood that is shed for you for the remission of sin, the removal of it. So tonight, I plead the blood. Make us white as snow again. Cleanse us. You said if we confess our sin, you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We plead the blood tonight. Cleanse us. Forgive us. Keep us. Surround us. Put a hedge around us, a hedge of blood. Put a hedge around every home, around every home watching tonight, every person in every living room, in every dorm room, in every vehicle. We plead the blood over you. I plead the blood, Lord, as the pastor of this church, over this house, over my family, over every family represented here. Come on, you need to do it for your own family. Just say, I plead the blood over my family. Yeah. Oh, Lord, we thank you for the blood that we receive in faith the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for the blood. Let's receive. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Don't move on. Just wait there in His presence. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. If you have had your heart completely shattered over the last two weeks, I want you to stand up. Thank you, Lord. Shattered. It's a wound so deep, you've often wondered, I, I'm not sure if this will ever lift. If you're near them, I want you to just put your hand on their arm. If you're not near them, stretch your hands. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, be healed. The Bible says he heals the brokenhearted and binds up our wounds. Be healed in the depths of your soul. I rebuke the hand of the enemy that has come to do damage through fiery darts that got through. And right now, be free. The Bible says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. May the oil, oh, I'm, I feel this. May the oil of the Spirit, the very balm of Gilead, come upon your broken heart 
And so right now, wherever you are in this room or watching, I want you to release the person who shattered your heart. Release them. Even if you need to say their name. If you need to whisper it, that's fine. Just don't stay there. Don't stay in unforgiveness. Release them. Release them. Now, Father, as they release them, your word says, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sinned against us. As we release those who've hurt us, release them of this pain now. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will serve the Lord in joy. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If you've, you can sit down if you just received prayer. If you suffer from insomnia, I want you to stand up. I want you to stand up if you suffer. Lord, come on, stretch your hands. Father, in Jesus' name, I want to agree with you. In Jesus' name, let the rest of God come upon this man and upon the others in the room, whoever needs this. In Jesus' name. Is that a young man there standing? Lord, in Jesus' name, give that young man rest and peace, 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 peace. I want everyone to pray. Stretch your hands towards these men. Pray in the Spirit for 30 seconds. Come on. Come on. This is the moment of breakthrough. We've come to the table of the Lord where weakness is hidden like Mephibosheth's broken legs under the table. Be whole now in Jesus' name. You will rest. As Jesse was healed of it in 2016 in Reading, thank you, Father, that you're the same God. Heal now. You give your beloved sleep, your word says. Thank you, Lord. You give your beloved sleep. Hallelujah. Is there someone in the room who's injured their left shoulder? Their left shoulder. Oh, Jesus, thanks. If that's you, just lift your hands. If you're near them, just stretch your hands. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you that you're healing that injury. You're healing these injuries right now. Wonderful Lord, thank you for your healing power. Churches, pray in the Spirit. It moves heaven. It changes the atmosphere in the room. We speak to these shoulders. Command all the pain to go. You just came to the table of Jesus, His precious body and blood. This is the table of healing. Move that shoulder. Just begin moving it by faith. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you, precious Father. Did you pray for them? Was that a shoulder? What happened? Did they get healed? Yeah? Is your, what's, what's going on down there? Huh? He was just healed. Go over there, Ryan. Is he the man from Palm Coast? Yeah. <laughs> you get healed all the time. God is it's because you have a biblical beard. <laughs> what? I'm trying to it's, catch up to you. I, it's Moses inspired. What happened? What happened? Um, I've been having some, a lot of issues in my left shoulder, and um, it's been really painful. Um, Did you injure it? Um, I, no, it just, it no. really just started Why hurting. were you crying? I just got healed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there is a scripture that Jesus said. He prayed. He said, I'm not praying this, Father, because, because I'm wondering if you hear me. I know you hear me. It's for their sake. So <laughs> I get that totally. Yeah. But I love that. So yeah. did, did you feel the power of God come I, on you? I instantly, I, there was, I felt my wife touch me, but then I felt, I just felt something go through. Wow. Um, so... Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. 
Thank you, Lord. Precious Jesus. Precious Jesus. Precious Jesus. Just pray in the Spirit for another 30 seconds. Precious Jesus. Wonderful King. We exalt you and adore you. And we worship you. Oh yeah, just begin to sing in the Spirit. Come on, lift your voice. Begin to sing in the Spirit. Come on, we're almost there. We're almost done. But, 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 but the Lord saves the best wine. The best wine for last. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Are there any pastors here who came in from out of town for a fresh touch from the Holy Spirit? Are there any pastors here or ministers of any kind? Yeah? Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stretch your hands, house. Come on. Stretch your hands towards them. Father, come on, come on. I want you to all sing in the Spirit right now. Uh, I need you to pick that up. Yeah, bigger, 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 bigger. More, I know, I got to hear it more. I got to hear it more. That's it, that's it, that's it. Wonderful Holy Spirit, clothe these people who've come for a fresh touch from your hand, not mine, in the mighty name of Jesus. Where are you from, young man? Where are you from? Keep praying, guys. Don't stop. You know better. Where are you I'm, from? I'm from Kissimmee. Kissimmee. Come. That's not out of town, but that qualifies. Get over here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come on. Keep praying. Sing in the spirit. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. You play a part in this. You play a part in this. Where are you from, ma'am? Massachusetts. You're in the ministry? Thank you, Lord. You guys, stretch your hands. Pray. Just stay right there, Ryan. Hallelujah. I want the team to get around this young man. Team, get around him. Get around him. Where are you from? Where? New York City. Get over here. Y'all need it. Get over here. Come on. Come on. Get down here. Go. Everyone sing. 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 Stop watching. Come on. Sing. 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 You don't need me to call you down here. I'm just looking at the ones that the Lord is highlighting. But God can touch you wherever you are. I want everyone here to sing in the Spirit for one straight minute. In fact, stand up. Stand up. Everyone stand up. Come on. Come on. See, this kind of stuff changes lives. It changes nations and cities and generations. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. I'm not going to pray unless you start singing. Holy, holy, holy. It's not by mind. That's why it's not by mind. It's not by power. It's by the Spirit of the Lord. Holy, 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 holy. Now I want you to begin praying in the Spirit all over the room. Come on, out loud, out loud, out loud. Pray in the Spirit. Pray out loud, pray out loud. Jose, get on the drums. Come on. Come on. You get on those drums. You start playing those drums, God's going to release something. Come on, get on those drums. Get on those drums. Come on. Let the Lord use you. Let the Lord use you. It is not by might, it is not by power, it is by my spirit. Wonderful, wonderful Holy Spirit. Wonderful, wonderful Holy Spirit. Wonderful, 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 wonderful Holy Spirit. Father, in Jesus' name. Something else. Just a full pad. You play. Full pad, you play. Yeah. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Come up here, babe. Stand next to me. Pray for another minute. Come on. Babe, babe. Come here. Just stand right there. Stand right there. 
Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let your power and glory come upon these ministers. Let them minister like they've never known. Let them go back to New York burning, burning with holy fire. Give them souls. Break the back of sickness and demonic oppression. Clothe them in boldness. In the mighty name of Jesus, clothe them in the fire of the Holy Ghost. Clothe them in your power. Fill them. Fill them to overflowing. Fill to overflowing. Wind of heaven, be the wind at their sail. Be the, keep praying, church. Be the wind at their back. Be the fire in their bones. You pastor a church? No, I'm a prophet in a business. You're a prophet. Jesus, I thank you for blessing them. Fill them. Use them. In Jesus' name. Young man, are you a pastor? Fill them. Are you a youth pastor or a full-on pastor? You're a youth pastor. Lord, use him to bring fire to the youth. Use him. Clothe him in your glory. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Praise you, Lord. Praise your Lord. Hi, young man, how many kids do you pastor? I'd say about 15. 15. How old are they? Between the ages of 12 and about 25, 26. Father, get them all. Yes. Get them all. Come on, agree with me. Get them all. Get them all. How many of you came in from out of town? You're not full time pastoral, five fold ministry, but you've come in from out of town. Church, turn around. Come on, stretch your hands. Let's believe God that they're going to leave burning, 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 burning. Father, fill them all. Come on, come on. Fill them all. Fill them all. Let them all have an infatuation for Jesus. In Jesus' name. Go home burning like a torch. Can we just agree on this? Father, thank you for revival in America. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for a true Jesus movement in America. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Babe, I want you to just bless them all. Just pray a prayer. Bless them. Lord Jesus, we just ask that you will increase our hunger, Jesus. Lord, let this be the cry of our heart, Jesus. Lord, keep us hungry, Lord, like little children, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, that the more we eat, the more we'll want, Jesus, that we'll never be satisfied, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Lord, forgive us, God, if we've turned away from you, Jesus. Forgive us if we put things above you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, I'm asking that your fire will fall in Jesus' name. Let your fire fall with our children, Lord. Let your fire fall in our marriages, Jesus. Let your fire fall, Lord, in our relationships, Jesus. I thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. I, Lord, I thank you. Yeah, there's just somebody here that you have a um, fertility issue, and Jesus is healing you from that issue. There's somebody even watching online. You're, you're, you're a young girl, you're in your 20s, and you've been married for about four years, and you just cannot get pregnant, and you've been crying out, and you've been asking the Lord to heal you, and Jesus is the God that heals, and he is healing you in Jesus' name. It is the Lord's will that you be fruitful and multiply, so we speak healing to your womb right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, for any 
couple in here that is having issues having children, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, that these, that these issues with fertility will stop right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that not only will they stop, Lord, that they will get pregnant right away in Jesus' name, Lord. This will not be a long, drawn-out process, Jesus. I thank you, Father. Thank you, yeah, someone's getting healed from tendinitis. We speak healing to your body in Jesus' name. There's a left ear condition. Jesus is healing your ear. You felt like a pop right now when I started praying and Jesus is restoring your hearing in Jesus name thank you Jesus again migraines severe migraines the Lord is healing you you've had them since you were a child you are now an adult and they've always come and go and God is healing you you will never have migraines again in Jesus name thank you Jesus Allergies. There's somebody that has severe allergies. You, there's certain foods that you've had to completely eliminate out of your diet. And you have like almost like um, colitis. And Jesus is healing you right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Let your healing power flow in Jesus' name. Let your healing power flow. You are the Lord that heals, Jesus. You are the Lord that redeems, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that redemption is coming to families in Jesus' name. Redeem, 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 redeem by the blood of the Lamb in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, there's, there's, there's a mom. You've been praying for your son for years and years, and God is going to restore not only your, your marriage, he's going to restore your children, but he's going to redeem the time that was lost. He's going to redeem the time that was lost, and, and there's going to be joy and peace and laughter in your household. You've even said to yourself, I, haven't re I can't remember the last time I've laughed. I can't remember the last time that my husband and I have laughed together, and Jesus is restoring the joy. He's restoring the joy in your home and your marriage and with your children. It's going to start with your marriage first and it's going to trickle down to your children because your children, the, the happiness has been gone in your home because your marriage has been so messed up. And Jesus is going to restore your marriage and then your children are going to get redeemed by the blood of the Lamb in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, there's, there's somebody that you've turned away um, from the Lord, you're watching. You grew up in church, and you grew, and you've been a you're you're a boy, and you grew up in church. You're a teenager, actually. You're around 13 years old, and you grew up in church, and you knew Jesus, but you've turned away, and you actually said, I want nothing to do with this, and you don't even believe if God is real anymore, but the Lord is tenderizing your heart. He's showing you right now that he is real, and he loves you so much. He loves you so much, and he died for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for these children, Lord, that have turned away, like me, that, that turned away and didn't know you, Jesus. Bring them back to you, Jesus. Bring them back to you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, there's someone that has neck issues. You have neck issues. At times you have to wear a brace because of the pain, and Jesus is healing the pain right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. There's an issue, um, aneurysms. In Jesus' name, I thank you. This is how I know it's the Lord, because I, I don't even know what some of these things are. I know the name, but I don't know the what it means. But Jesus is healing aneurysms right now in Jesus' name. Thank you again, fibromyalgia. What he started today with that, he's going to continue to heal. Every single person, Lord, that has fibromyalgia, that is listening to the sound of my voice, Lord, in this room, on, online, Jesus, I thank you, Father, that every single condition of fibromyalgia, it goes right now in Jesus' name. Lupus, go right now in the name of Jesus. Leukemia, go right now in Jesus' name. We curse cancer in the name of Jesus. Jesus, by, your, by his stripes, you are healed, Jesus. You are healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. Even those that even hospice has come in and, and hope is gone, we speak healing to your body right now in Jesus' name. Nothing's too big for Jesus. Nothing is too big. Nothing is too great for Jesus. He's of the name above all names. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. He conquered death in the grave. He can conquer any sickness in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, yes. Keep us burning, Jesus. Keep us on fire for you, Jesus. Keep us pure, Jesus. Let us be holy, a blameless bride, Jesus. Lord, keep us in love, Jesus. Let first love burn in our hearts in Jesus' name, Lord. Let it burn in our hearts, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. So today on the way home this morning, I, I uh, saw a lady on the side of the road holding a homeless sign. So I stopped at the stoplight with the kids and gave her some money. I told her that Jesus loved her. She said, my daddy was a pastor. And you could tell she was addicted, living on the streets. And I said, you know, the Lord sent me to you so that you never forget Jesus. And remember, he's the one giving this to you right now, and he loves you. Don't forget the Lord. And so I pray over you tonight that you would leave with the most deep awareness of his presence and that you'd never give up hope on those who seem so far gone. That if God has to send a pastor after service to roll his window down and give money to a lady living under a bridge in her 20s who's a PK, God can do it for you. So Lord, use us as beacons, as vessels of light. We are the children of light, your word says. Glorify your name through us and bless the people. I declare a blessing over you in Jesus' name. Be blessed. Amen. Prayer team, would you come? I'd like the prayer team to come forward. If you've come tonight in need of prayer, we did not get to you. Our prayer team is here and ready to serve you. Come down the center aisle and our ushers will help lead you to the right prayer team member. God bless you all. Love you. See you Tuesday night if you'd like to come. If not, we'll see you next Sunday. Love you so much. Good night. God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus shed his blood. He died on the cross. He was buried. He rose again from the dead on the third day to give you life and to prove that he is the son of God who he said he was. Today he is seated at the right hand of the Father. And for those who belong to him, he is interceding for them eternally. And that same Jesus will return again. He will crack the eastern sky like a whip. And with ten thousands upon ten thousands, he will return in glory. In 2017, we received a word from Lou Engel that we really believe is the word of the Lord for our school, our house, and the entire ministry. Lou said that the greatest musicians in the world, and the greatest vocalists in the world, the greatest worshipers, that they would descend upon Orlando, Florida to Jesus' image. And that word began to burn in us, and we began to dream about what it would look like to one day have a school where people would come to worship Jesus and be in his presence and receive his word and a church was birthed in that same worshiping atmosphere. And what a beautiful opportunity that we have as a Jesus people to come before him and to be at his feet and to pour ourselves out before him. Worship has the potential to unlock things that really nothing else in the world can unlock. And so we decided about a year ago to launch a, an opportunity within the Jesus School setting for those worshipers, for the musicians, for the singers, for the dancers, for the artists, for the poets. And this is going to be a place 
where you can come and you can learn and you can grow. And we have highly trained instructors who are gonna be coming. They're gonna be teaching instruments. They're gonna be teaching vocals. Anything that you can think of with worship, it's going to be there. The worship is not about us. We worship for Him. So we wanna invite you to come. Come worship the King of Kings with us. So come and be a part of what the Lord is doing. Come and give your heart to the Lord. Come and surrender yourself to the Lord. And let's be ones that are willing to rise and go. And we decided to name it after Bethany, that wonderful house where Jesus was ministered to, that place where the feelings of Jesus were preeminent. It was a place where he desired to not only move and work and teach and do wonderful things, but a place where he would be adored, a place where he would rest, a place where he would run to so that he would receive ministry. And so now Jesus School has this space that's been created for all of you who are desiring to use your vocal gifts, your instrumental gifts, your gifts of worship, your dancing gifts, and give them to Jesus. Jesus would make this a Bethany, that he'd make our lives a Bethany, where he'd come and rest and recline among us. You were created to experience the presence of God in a way that will transform your life, family, and the world. We understand how difficult it can be to find time to attend a school where you study the Word of God, grow in your faith, and build a community of believers. And that's why we created Jesus School Online. We believe that the Holy Spirit is unlimited in His reach. No matter where you live or what stage of life you're in, we invite you to take part in this amazing online opportunity. You'll be led by world-renowned speakers and worship leaders. You will be taught to seek Jesus daily, be activated in the power of the Holy Spirit, learn to share the gospel, and build community with Jesus people from around the world. At Jesus School Online, we are passionate about seeing a Jesus people raised up to shake the nations for the glory of God. You were created for this moment in history. The Jesus people are emerging and we have one ambition. Jesus himself. Will you join us?